Time delta returns difference between two date objects. It is basically used for comparing date objects. There are mathematical operations that can be done using time delta. You can add and do subtraction. You can also do uh, subtraction and addition unary operation. And you can divide and also multiply a time delta instance with an integer. You can also do comparison with a time delta. To instantiate a time delta, you'll do from date time, import time delta. This activate time delta uh, in your code. And the syntax for time delta is time delta, day, seconds, microseconds, milliseconds, minutes, hours, and week. Yeah, it's not really um, intuitive because it's all mixed together. Uh, a better way you can deal with time delta is to say time delta and use um, named parameters. So if you want to do hours, you say hours 20. Or if you want to do days, you say days, say 10 days. So let's do this example. I'll just say timed equals day 20. So, and I'm going to print out time D. So you can see here it has 10 days. If I say hours is 10, it's going to show you 10 hours. If I say 10 days and hours equals to 2. So it's going to show you 10 days, 2 hours. You can do it for days, for seconds, for microseconds, even for weeks. So now I have 10 days here. I can say um weeks add two more weeks equals to two more weeks two weeks will be 14 days and then plus another 10 days that will be 24 days and then two hours you can do that for minutes you can do that for seconds um, whatever number of days or number of time you want to specify so when you have a time delta you can Add or subtract a date time using the time delta. So let's take an instance. We have DT1 that is 2021, uh, 10, and 28. It has this data. I can come here and say difference is DT1 minus timed. If I print out difference now, you would notice that it has changed. It's no longer... Okay, let me print out DT1 and uh, put a little um, mark to differentiate it. So here, you can see 2021, 10, 28... But at the moment, we reduce it by we reduce it by two weeks and ten days. So you can see right here the date has reduced. It's no longer twenty eight days. It's now on the fourteenth. Twenty four days has been taken off the date. You can also do an addition if you want. If I say addition, you can see twenty four days is added to um, the date. We can also do unary addition. Let me comment all these out and print DT1. I can now have a unary addition by adding maybe 10 more days to DT1 by doing DT1 plus equals to time delta days equals to 10. So I've added 10 more days to DT1, then I can print out the value of DT1 and you will see here that 10 more days have been added to DT1 because I use a unary addition. Of course, I can also do minus. If you do minus, you'll see 10 days has been taken off the first uh, date we have here. I can also divide or multiply a time delta by integers. So let me do print dt1 minus time delta. I'm going to minus it by 10 days. I want you to print out 
let me comment all these out and say dt1 comma so i want you to print dt1 put this one and then print out the date um i don't want it to print out the time so i'm gonna do you know i if you want to do just get the date on the date times say date time with the method date so it shows me only the date it takes out all the time so now on this time delta i have time delta on this date i subtracted 10 days so instead of 28 days you have 18 days um what you can do with time delta is that you can actually divide the time delta say divided by two instead of 10 days it's going to be subtracting by five days you will see here it's 28 days subtracted by five days you have 23 days you can also multiply the time delta by an integer of course uh, this will make this will add 20 days that is 10 days plus two will give you uh, 20 days and is that will be subtracted from date time value you have here so it's going to subtract 20 days you see the date is 28 right here and at this point is um zero eight you can do comparison with date time class and um, you can use a time delta to change the value of the comparison let's take a look at this example I have here two dates. When I compare daytime two and three, when I say DT2 greater than DT3, is DT2 greater than DT3? Um, this is on the 23rd, so it's greater than the date that started uh, on the 10th. So DT2 one. What if I add some days to DT3? So I can come and say plus time delta, another 15 days. Now, because I added 15 days, you can see that it has changed to DT3. So it means DT3 now is greater because of this evaluation. Another thing you need to understand also is that when you add any date time with a time value, it returns back a date time. When you say date time plus or minus time delta, it returns date time. But when you say date time minus date time, when you do this, you minus one date time from another date time, it returns a time delta. The value it returns is a time delta. Just look at it. Usually, time delta will give you number of days as a result. So when you subtract two dates, it's going to give you time delta. It's going to tell you the number of days difference. Let's look at it in this example. Let me print out DT2 minus DT3. Let me comment this out. So DT3 minus DT2 is giving you these outputs. If you remember, this is how time delta output is. And if you want to see that I can see the type of the value dt3, dt2 minus dt3. What type does it return? So it's showing time delta. So, but when you subtract a date time from a time delta, dt2 minus time delta days say 10 days i print results and I also print the the results type because i subtract a time delta from a date time it returns a date time let's take an exercise from the date uh, model that we just um, went through we're going to have um, an exercise where we return the age, that is the year, the month, the date from today's date. So whatever age you enter is going to show us the year and the month and the days that have passed for that date. What we're going to do here is, first of all, get today's date. 
And to get today's date, I'm just going to say today is, I can get today using the date time, today. This will print out the current date. You can also do now. Now will give you the same thing with just some little difference. There is also UTC now for today's date. So to make it simple, I'm just going to take today. Today also works for date. If you're using the date um, class, it's going to give you today's date, just the date. But if you're using the date time, it's going to give you the date and the very um, minute and seconds we are. So I have today and then I'm going to create any date of birth. I'll say 1993 and the month is on the 10th month on the third day. I have two date times with two different dates. So I'm going to print out that today's date is today and I will also print out date of birth and to get the number of days total days I'm gonna say today subtracted by DOB so if we print total days it's gonna say total days is 10,385 days in total know that um, using date time i have already inputted from date time i've already done that up somewhere there i've imported date time that is why i'm able to call the date time class and um you know it's actually bringing out it's bringing out uh values for minutes and seconds for time and i really don't want date time i just want to work with date so i'm going to change this i'm going to import date and then i'm going to change this to date date will work also yeah so it has just the date it doesn't have um the the time attached to it and you would remember if you're using a date time or a date and you are subtracting them, the result that will be returned will be a time delta. And that is why it's giving you 10,385 days and um, zero seconds. This is a time delta value. And if I just want it to return just the days, I'm going to say I will put these in a comma and say days. So it's just going to give me 10,385 days. So to calculate the number of years, this is easy. All I'll do is say total days. I'm going to divide it by 365. So I can print out yes, is yes. So he's 28 years old. I'm going to calculate the months. And let me just spit the code for months calculation. The, mo the code for months calculation is we have 28 years multiplied by 360 to get the number of um, year as we calculated here. And then you subtract it from the total number of days. So it's going to give you a remainder, um, some numbers that you will divide by 30 to give you the number of months that remains months will be months so that is five months to calculate the number of days i'm just gonna paste the code for number of days here also to calculate the number of days is the total year same way you did calculating the number of um, months and then you also multiply that number of months by 30 months uh, multiply by 30 subtract it from this value that will give us days it's all some little mathematics there so days will be days if i say uh, 1903 that is 118 years six months and um, eight days 
this date of birth is hard coded in the real world instance the program should be able to have a dynamic date of birth so that anybody that comes in to use the program can put in his date of birth and can get the result so in this um, example i'm just going to modify this code so that we can have the date of birth um, coming in into the code and uh, um, the date of birth being imputed um, on the command line so right here i'm gonna say get in use the input command to enter the date of birth enter the date of birth so i'll take in the date of birth here let me comment these out just for now if i print the date of birth the date list here you will have to do that from your code line so let's assume what comes out because when you do inputs um you get data from your code line it actually gives you a string so let's say the string is 1999 comma 10 months comma 03 let me change let me do this description year month day i'm going to comment this out if i print 1999 this is going to print out this as a string if i want to separate it i can use the split the string split method and i'll say split it using slashes everywhere it sees a slash is going to split it into a list so it prints out this splitted into a list these are strings even though they are numbers but they are in strings so i need to convert these outputs to integers and the way to do that is to use the map method i'll say dob2 i'll say map integer i'll explain what that does but we've treated it you can go and check out at other tutorials to see how that works so date list split this returns a map object d dob2 and then i can just put this map object in a list dob2 and then you can see it returns this value this way so whatever you put in is returned this way it's no longer um, coming out as string it's coming out as integers in a list so this is what we're going to do we get that list in an integer and then we spread the values inside the date function we'll, we'll, we'll put all these values we'll spread it inside the date function so let's rename this to dobm that is dob map and i'm gonna do dob lists so i'm gonna convert what is in the map to a list that's dobm to a list and then the date of birth will be date then i'll put dob lists and spread the value asterisk to spread the value into a date so with this the content of dobl is 199 comma 10 comma 03 with the asterisk when you do asterisk dobl is going to just spread it this way this is what it's going to do it's going to put this right in here i'm going to create the data bird directly using this and if i uncomment my code you will see it's using this date as my date data bird and it's getting out the result using this date and like i said i don't intend to use um, a hard-coded date so i'm gonna comment this out and use a date list that is i want it to get the data from the command prompt so i'm gonna run my code um, from the terminal so right here at the terminal you can see it says enter your date of birth i'll say 199910 zero three and i press enter you can see here it's give me that same result 22 years 
month and all that. I can run it again, put another date, say 1975.05. That's the month 11. It's going to give me 46 years, 10 months, 15 days. 